Hi everyone, thanks for joining me once again for another round of Saturday Viewers Stories. If you haven't been here before, this is Thailand Ban, my name's Peter, and part of what I do is I read out true stories that are sent to me from viewers that have visited Thailand. Now, if you remember about a month ago, I changed the format of how I tell stories. I was having background images go behind me, I was out and about filming, and I was using that as a background. Most people like the new format, but there are quite a few people out there who have said, I don't like it, it puts me off. So, as always, trying to keep everything everybody happy. I'm going to alternate it from week to week. So this week, for those people, you'll be happy to hear that I'm just going to have a static video in the background and I'm going to be here uh, right in the middle of the screen. Okay, so four stories today. Let's kick off and get straight into the first story. I'm happily married and come from Liverpool in the UK. Despite visiting Thailand since 1997, it wasn't until three trips with my family and two others in Phuket that I got the Thailand bug. Back then, there was plenty to do as a family and then at night, plenty to do with my friends at the famous Bangla Road. My story gets interesting when I turned 38 and started attending 40th birthday parties. They were your cliche get-togethers and they were rather dull. I knew that I wanted more and it was at one of these parties that I hatched the plan with my favourite friends that the, we were going to Pattaya for our 40th. It's important to note that my 40th was still two years away and this is exactly how much time both I and my married friends needed to convince our wives to let us go for two weeks. We were all on our best behaviour in the lead up and it took a lot of convincing to use up the long service leave in our marriages for the trip. So the date was closely approaching and then with one month to go, COVID hit. We all had no choices but we had to wait. During this time, three of the original group no longer were coming. One friend no longer could come as his wife snapped and said he was banned from going. The next guy was uninvited by us after we realised how much of a party pooper he was. The final guy was dropped after we went to the strip club one night and he broke the golden rule and told his wife what, what went on. This led to him earning the nickname WikiLeaks and was promptly left out of our invitation list. Thailand finally opened and we timed it perfectly, arriving the week after the COVID hotels were no longer required. We were so excited when we arrived in Pattaya, but despite so much research, struggled to find our bearings. The first night we went to Walken Street and what a disappointment that was. Covid had hit this area hard. The whole street was ripped up and were, they were repairing works underway. Most nightclubs were shut and after walking just 50 metres everything was closed down. Even McDonald's which oddly had the hours of 2am to 5am we decided to visit the few goggles at the front like Skyfall that were actually open. We went into three of the go-go's and while my friends loved it, I didn't. I found the girls were aggressive, prices were too high and to be honest, I was really hoping for more. Maybe Bangla Road is better. The next day we did a Pattaya tour and the tour owner commented that this was the first really big group since Covid to bar hop. It was a great way to get a feel for the gents clubs and meet new people. Some of the things we seen were a real eye opener. The day was long and we were getting restless after drinking all day and the tour finished in LK Metro. My eyes just lit up and I knew this was exactly what I had come for. The area had the best tourists, best go-go's and cleanest women. Anyone that has been to the area also knows that you can't miss a trip to Kink Go-Go which is the pinnacle and the most pricey. With two levels you really have to see it to believe it. Two weeks is a long time in Pattaya, but it took a whole week really for myself and my friends to get into the groove. After a week of all these beautiful women growing our egos, calling us handsome men etc, we really all grew in confidence and started feeling great. Remember, we had all been married for a long time so get the attention to get attention like this was extra special. Every day and night we were meeting so many girls and they would all add their line ID message and messages. Whenever the guys would meet for lunch or dinner, the line notifications could be heard every minute. As we were all married men and this trip wasn't about bar finding, we actually found the gents clubs the most enjoyable as they opened earlier, had far cheaper drinks and had been easier to talk to as a group. 
Some even served food and had the football or cricket showing. What man doesn't love having food, sport, friends and beautiful women with them at the same table? We were in heaven and of course once we had quite a few refreshments at the gents clubs the nights would always transition to the go-go bars and we even visited the clubs twice. One of my favourite gents clubs was over the hill in a secluded area and had a pool, barbecue and great facilities. I was really keen on recreating one of those corny 80s scenes and paid for one of the girls to have a partial skinny dipping activity with me. Trust me, it took a lot of convincing as these girls really don't want to get their hair wet at any cost. Anyway, we had a lot of fun in that pool and I got to live the dream I had when I was a kid. The only negative of that club was one guy got too drunk, picked up a girl and threw her into a pool. This wasn't funny as the guy was way too drunk and the girl landed only halfway into the pool and scraped her knee with blood everywhere. I have two stories from Gogo's during my time. One was in a Gogo where the girls dressed like they are Japanese. I had several drinks with this beautiful girl, May. She sat on my lap and she was rocking to the music. Anyway, later at 2am after curfew, she saw, me, she saw me on the street, hit me and said I was a bad man for getting her excited and not bar finding her. Funny stuff. The other story was when I was in another go-go bar, I chose this beautiful girl and had a few drinks with her. I'm not sure why, but after her, her third drink, she went cold, so I told her to go back and dance. I then put, picked out another girl and had several drinks with her. Before I knew it, someone grabbed me and pulled me to the exit. It was a mamasan telling me the first girl was watching the whole thing and she had lost face. I explained that she went cold on me, but I still got the boot. To be fair, I went back there several times and the Mamasan and I joked about it and I, we promised each other I wouldn't do it again. I also told her it's bad practice to be kept kicking out paying customers from her bar. There were two big positives of coming to Thailand post-Covid. Firstly, there was a curfew at 2am, including the go-go bars. We actually loved this as it gave you a target time to end your night. This would lead to extra drinking and activity just before closing time and 2am worked just fine with us. I have been to Thailand since and missed the last drink scenario that has existed back then. Secondly, prices were so cheap, especially accommodation. We stayed at some of the best hotels at a third of the price they are now. Most hotels were half were full half full back then and I just know the next time I visit I'll keep on complaining at the higher prices. My advice to anyone who has a girlfriend who is married and planning a similar similar trip is never to use your local SIM card, buy a SIM card and use the line app when you're in Thailand. Then when you're leaving Thailand throw out the SIM card at Bangkok Airport while this will be one of the hardest things to do in your life, it's best to cut off your communication with these women and lose the message history in the process. It's really for the best. Adjusting back to the UK was so extremely difficult and took several weeks, but we got there. My friends met up regularly each week and we would laugh at our adventures. We all know we will be back there when it's our 50th Honestly, you only live once and while this trip took a lot of planning, raised a lot of people's eyebrows and used up a lot of marriage goodwill, it was worth it. Just allowing my friends and I to spend time together was a trip of a lifetime. Uh, he is absolutely right actually. You know when uh, you get guys here and they put a new SIM card in their phone uh, and they play around in Patia, it's always, it is really a good idea to just, when you get on that plane, just throw that SIM card away uh, because one uh, you don't want other people to access it and see what you've been up to here. And uh, the other thing is a lot of guys try to keep, you, you know, they're back in the UK or America, wherever they come from, and it's boring. They're back at work, but they want to kind of keep the memory of uh, Patty or Bangkok, wherever they were on vacation. They want to keep that alive. And they know a few girls and they keep communicating with them because it's so boring back home, let's face it. And then what happens? Reluctantly, the guy will start sending money a lot of the time because he's, the, he's not in Thailand anymore, is he? He's just communicating communicating by the line app and uh, it gets closer to these girls and then they need help with all sorts of things and uh, sometimes it can turn into a bit of a money pit so it is a good idea uh, and I was just as I was reading that the first time I was thinking to myself how many guys come here on so-called uh, golfing holidays or uh, pool tournaments that sort of thing but end up in patio very strange right okay into story number two 
I used to be in the military back in my home country. I heard so many stories similar to yours about my peers in the military getting heartbroken, scammed, or sometimes even get surprised with a ladyboy overseas and when they were on deployment around Asia. As much as I was excited to explore the world, I unfortunately suffered an injury in military training that sealed my destiny of never going overseas with my friends and was forced to stay with the guys that had injuries, guys that denied the COVID vaccine and they were getting kicked out. Peers that were under investigation for criminal activities and people that were close to finishing their contracts. In total, we were about 100 guys and a few pregnant women. During this time, I started watching videos of Asia and beautiful tourist sites, culture, and of course the females of the happy life that works in bars. I was fascinated by the beauty of Asi Asian females and its affordable prices. I knew this was my next destination once I finished my contract with the military. To begin with, exciting, the military was one of the happiest moments of my life. I was finally a free man ready to go see my family and shortly after execute my long planned trip across Asia. I travelled to eight countries in which I fell in love with Thailand, Cambodia and the Philippines. I am a young and very tall man, six foot five, green eyes, muscular and confident. My plan was to go to a few bars and have fun with the bar girls. I always knew not to fall in love or spend money in other things other than their services. I was very disciplined with this. I had a lot of fun and the bar with the bar girls, but I knew it was temporary. I had other options waiting that didn't work in a bar. I had opened my Tinder and Bumble account a few weeks before arriving in Asia. I had a few girls lined up in countries I fell in love with. One of these girls I was chatting with was named Moon from the Philippines. Once I arrived in Davio, Philippines, I text Moon a few days later to meet at a location of my choice. We met, had some dinner and a good talk about each other's lives. The date finished, I stayed at the mall, we met and she left to go back home. I got a text one hour later, she was confused on why I didn't even bother to try and have aerobics with her since all the guys she ever met always wanted to have aerobics. I replied by telling her, I don't have to have aerobics with you, I enjoyed your time we had and hopefully we'll meet again when I come back to Davio. She understood I'm a man that has many women available, she could be replaced at any moment. Deep down, this was part of my plan, of course I wanted to have aerobics with her, but I just didn't want to show it on the first date. Furthermore, the day I met her was my last day in Davio, I had to take a flight to Manila. Since I was leaving, she started acting in a strange way. I understood her message and decided to invite her to my hotel, in which she agreed. I had a good aerobics with her, but I didn't want to finish inside, even if I was wearing protection. I wanted to finish having aerobics, but she didn't want to stop until I finished inside. For the first time, I had to fake a climax, and immediately I went to the toilet to clean myself and hide the protection, so she would not know the truth. As soon as we finished, I called a taxi to take both of us to our destination. I made sure she got home safe. Once I arrived in Manila, I had to take another flight in three days to Thailand. Moon and I chatted one time before I took an aircraft to Thailand days later. To continue, I was having a blast around Thailand when I get a text from Moon one week later telling me she hasn't had her woman's monthly cycle in three days. I assumed she was just late, so I told her not to worry about it. Another week passed and she texts me that she hasn't got that woman's monthly cycle at all and she was very worried. I told her if she's really pregnant not to worry, I will personally go to the Philippines and take care of this business in case of anything. She continued to send me paranoid texts about it. I told her there's no way she's pregnant if I wore protection and I did not finish at all. She explained to me that pre-finish can get a woman pregnant even if I wore protection. Also, she was very fertile the night we had aerobics. I was just tired of her nonsense stories. I told her, I will take care of the baby only when a DNA test is done. There's no way you are pregnant. I know what I'm doing. Are you trying to scam me or something? The moment I said this, she got really mad and told me she will get an abortion and many other things that were nonsense. My final text to her, I told her, if she's getting an abortion, there's nothing else to talk about. I wished her a happy life and I blocked her. 
A few months passed by when I suddenly received a message from Moon from her secondary account asking me why I blocked her with several laughing emojos. Also telling me she was disappointed with me. After reading that message, I blocked her without even replying. In conclusion, my story wasn't related with bar girls scams, but from a girl I met on a dating app that worked in McDonald's and was going to college. The moment I requested a DNA test, she suddenly doesn't want to have the kids anymore. I was genuinely going to support my child. The thought of abandoning a child wasn't my option. However, I knew she was talking nonsense and trying to attach me or scam me. I chose to play her game to see how far she would take this. After I blocked Moon for the second time, I never had contact with her again. I always heard these types of stories and how to react to similar situations. This is why I want to share this story to make everyone aware and not to send money until you 100% it is your child. So this is something I've heard a lot that happens in the Philippines. I don't know if it still happens, but it doesn't seem so prevalent in Thailand. As I say, it seems to be something that goes on in the Philippines where a girl's just trying to get any guy uh, to support her and be with her. And the baby seems to be that thing, that uh, not thing, but the, the, the child that ties them together. You know, a guy's reluctant to leave um, if he thinks he's got a child with a girl. Okay, let's get into story number three. I am a woman from the USA and part of the gay community. I tend to get weird reactions and also being almost blind, I am sort of overlooked. So hearing about Thailand and Patia was like this would be a fun change of pace. A few months later, I was on an aircraft to the land of smiles. I was going essentially to celebrate my 40th birthday. Knowing the heat and such and being used to Las Vegas heat, I packed accordingly. My budget was open for whatever. I exchanged a few thousand US dollars before heading out to the airport. My first plan was to go to my hotel, secure all my valuables, then venture out. Being in real estate in the States, I was open-ended on how long I would be going there as well. Going out at night was loud and so many drunk people were around and the loud music coming from the bars was very overwhelming. I do not drink, smoke or partake in any sort of substance and realised really the only thing I enjoyed were all the drop dead gorgeous Thai women. The problem was being a woman alone in Pattaya. Many men kept hitting on me. After almost being run over by several scooters I decided I would head back and enjoy the hotel and go out again in the daytime. I woke up in the early, early hours, freshened up and headed off down to breakfast and then went out for a walk. I quickly missed our US sidewalks as in Pattaya they were not as well maintained. I stumbled a few times and fell once so I decided to stop and people watch. Here I sat in paradise but the nights were a nightmare, nightmare due to my poor vision. Later in the day more people were around sitting in the shade for a while was pleasant but lonely. I was looking on the apps maybe I would try them to meet someone nice. I just wanted to meet a nice partner. After a while, I noticed a sweet seductive scent coming from an obvious freelancer. She was a blonde Russian woman who sat near me. She was in her early 20s, very athletic, and with my limited vision, looked perfect in every way. I glanced over at her and I noticed she was people watching like me. No phone in her hands, just sipping on a water from time to time. I smiled at her and she smiled back. I decided I would move closer to her. I stood up and took a step when I heard her say watch out and she yanked me back. A scooter almost ran me over. She pulled me back so hard we both fell on the ground, me on top of her. I was facing up. She was laughing and groaning. She helped me up and I, I fell back into her. I did not know it at the time but I had an ear infection so my balance was off. This time I was facing her. She smiled and asked me if I needed help. I said how... I I'm almost blind. For some reason, I can't stand up and now I'm essentially on top of her. She helped me up, introducing herself as Anya. She held me close, asking if I had drank too much. I said I don't drink alcohol at all. Her English was very good. She asked where I was staying and she walked me back to my hotel. She had me very tight, had my bag and was really taking care of me. Once in my room, she asked me if she could use the, my shower as she was now very sweaty. She also told me to put my stuff away as my bag was on the bed. I noticed when I moved her bag it was pretty much empty. I wondered 
If while helping me, she had lost the contents and when she came out of the shower, I mentioned I had moved her bag. She said all she ever carries is her ID, water and some money. She said she leaves the rest of her things back at her room. I thanked her as she was sitting next to me. I mentioned I was in the process of looking for a female partner to enjoy my time with. She smiled, took my phone off me, put it on the table and told me she was open to something new. That evening was unforgettable. Anya rang Grab Food Delivery Services and ordered us food and other essentials. She never asked me for money. She told me that she had a little nursing background so she checked my ears and discovered that I had an infection. Upon discovering the infection, she told me she would go to the pharmacy and pick up a few things, which she did. She came back with some medicine for my ear and some other bits and pieces, including a toothbrush for herself. I immediately jumped up and went to get money out of the safe to pay her back, but she told me not to worry about it. She really pampered me. She did my hair and plucked my eyebrows, making me feel much better. Anya turned to me and said, look, I've got to go now. I've got to go and make some money. I told her she didn't need to go and I would give her some. She sternly told me, no, wait here and I'll be back around 8 p.m. She also didn't drink alcohol. Later that evening, she did return and asked me if she could stay overnight with me. I said, yes, I would love that. She had brought over a few items for me to try on. She had a really sexy mini dress for me to try on, along with some other bits and pieces. It felt great being pampered. She was about the same size as me, so everything fitted perfectly. We played dress up for an hour or so, and then it was bedtime. We had an incredible night together. In the morning, we showered together and had breakfast in the room. I hadn't had this much fun for years. I felt I was really getting closer to Anya. She asked me if I would like to come to her hotel for a few hours, which I accepted. She had a really nice room on a high floor. When we arrived in the room, she took my phone off me, put it in a basket with hers and said, listen, no one is so important that we need to answer our phones while we're together. I thought this was really sweet. She ordered room service and she didn't scrimp on what she ordered. She didn't seem to mind splashing out the cash and actually ordered a lobster to the room. I was amazed that she was spending so much money. By this time, I was seriously falling in love with Anya. She told me if I wanted anything else, just order it and she will take care of the bill. But for the moment, she had to go out for a while. She returned about an hour later with another Russian girl she introduced as Paulina. Anya told me she had to go out and work for most of the night to make money, but Paulina would take care of me for the night and make me very happy. Paulina spoke a little English, nowhere near as good as Anya's, but she was a sweet girl and I enjoyed her company. The following morning, my dream came true. Anya came back very early in the morning and after taking a short shower, joined Paulina and myself in bed. It was probably the best experience of my life and that was before we all had breakfast in bed. Anya continued to pay for everything and never asked me for a penny. After a few weeks, I asked her, Anya, why she was doing this for me and where was all the money coming from? I don't know the full story, but apparently Anya was looking after a few other Russian girls. I won't try to explain it further than that here. Anya went on to tell me that she was attracted to me because unlike most of the other girls, I wasn't wearing any jewellery and very little makeup. I told her I thought it was unfair that she was paying for everything. She just smiled and said, if I wanted to pay money, we could go out into the villages and give money to some of the poor children. I later found out that Anya and Paulina were regular aerobics partners. I also found out that Anya and Paulina were avoiding returning to Russia for as long as possible because of the current war. So much to take in, but a wonderful few weeks. So the day finally came when I had to end my time in paradise and head back home to my mundane life in the States. Anya and Paulina took me to the airport. On the way in the car, Anya asked me for my ID. She took a picture of it and told me to take a picture of her ID. At the time, she was 22 and I was 40, so there's no way we could have been mistaken for each other. After a lot of tears at the airport, it was time for me to make my way to the gate to catch my flight. Luckily, we had just remembered to exchange numbers before I left the country. Now, you're probably thinking this is where my story ends, but no, there's more to come. Anya wanted to visit me in the States. It was incredibly difficult to get her a visa, but eventually she came to visit me. 
I thought very cute when she first turned up she had that little basket that she had put my phone into back in Patia. The first thing she did was to set it on a table, take my phone and together with hers place them in the basket telling me no one is more important than we are to each other so we should not be disturbed. That put a smile on my face. Anya was a great help to me being partially blind. She helped me in the real estate business, drove me around and really took care of me at home. The aerobics were of course an added bonus. Eventually, Anya had a long-term visa to stay in the US. And by this time, we were both in love with each other. She eventually got a job in one of Nevada's legal cat houses. She would go to work, earn money and spend most of it on me. I didn't like the fact that she was working there and the money wasn't important to me. I asked her if she could stop that line of work. She laughed out loud and said, No, I could never stop as I am under contract. She passed me a piece of paper and there was some kind of contract for one dollar. I didn't get it. I really didn't understand what this piece of paper meant. She told me she loved me and wanted to stay with me and would I take care of her for the rest of her life. Of course, I said yes, because obviously I loved her. Eventually, Anya and I were married. There was only one bridesmaid at the wedding, a Polish girl called Diba. That Anya knew. She whispered in my ear that Dibba would join us for aerobics later on with a cheeky smile on her face. Anya bought a brand new Telsa car for us to get around in. She then started helping me in the real estate business. Both Anya and I don't wear any jewellery or wedding rings, so if there are any small arguments, it, it normally ends with a smile from one or both of us. About a year after the wedding, Anya was off showing customers some real estate when I had a phone call from my bank. They asked me if I could come in for a meeting. When I went to the bank, the bank staff explained to me that Anya had deposited a large sum of money into my account. They advised me to move some of my money into some top savings accounts. Later that night, I spoke to Anya about this and she just laughed it off. Anya turned to me and said, look, this is going to be hard for you to believe. I'm actually quite a wealthy person. The work I did in Patia was just something I did for fun. Now I know many of your viewers listening to this story might find this incredibly difficult, difficult to believe, but honestly, this has really happened. Anya and I are still together. We are incredibly happy because she doesn't have to return to Russia. We've moved on to a small farm. We plan another trip to the Land of Smiles. And of course, Anya has paid for the tickets and the hotel. Thanks for reading out this story, and I hope your viewers enjoy it. Well, I'll be honest with you guys. When I read this story, I really didn't know what to make of it. It wasn't quite written like that. I had to make a lot. I had to completely rewrite the story actually, and I had to guess certain parts of it. It sounds quite an unusual thing to happen. I mean, I just read out the stories, right? So I don't know. I mean, it just seems unusual. You have to make up your own minds, right? We've got one very, very short story to end with, and uh, I hope you're going to enjoy this. I have been an avid watcher of your channel since lockdown and having never been to Thailand before, I thought I would share my story of my recent visit to the Land of Smiles. This isn't a crash and burn train wreck story of a bar girl ripping me off. This is a story of what can happen when you least expect it. Being an avid scuba diver, I have always fast fancied Thailand, but until recently, I could ne never justify a trip. However, last year, after a financial windfall, myself and six others booked a dive trip to explore some islands on a six-day live-aboard trip. For those of you who don't know live abroad is just that, you live aboard a dive boat, doing up to four dives a day essentially, eating, diving, sleeping, and then repeating the cycle. We decided to spend four days in Kolak before to chill out and adjust to the heat, doing some exploring before the diving. After the diving, which was truly amazing, we stayed in Kamala in Phuket and hired some scooters to explore the sites, Monkey Hill, Big Buddha, Elephant Sanctuary, to name just a few. We really enjoyed the area with its lovely beaches and the friendly smiles that the Thai people always seem to have. Obviously, one night we took a taxi to Patong and decided to check out Bangla Road, just for research purposes, you understand. Well, we really couldn't believe our eyes. Walking down Bangla Road like a fat kid in a sweet shop comes to mind. Dancing girls, touts, selling ping pong shows and of course the lady boys charging a hundred baht for a photo. All the while being called handsome men by scantily clad Thai girls. We ended up in various bars and were quickly surrounded by bar girls. 
After some flirting and drinking games, I decided to make my exit as I wasn't looking for any aerobics. But the others with me had other ideas and went off to have short times with the girls. The girls were lovely and great fun, always smiling, but I left after a kiss and a cuddle. After a great night out, we ended up back at our accommodation. The other guys comparing notes. The day was spent recovering from hangovers on the beach and the evening was spent bar hopping in Kamala. Later on in the evening, three of the group decided to have a massage, a genuine one I may add, so I ended up wandering around Kamala Beach soaking up the atmosphere, bar hopping and people watching. I eventually ended up walking past a massage place myself and as I already had a massage, a genuine one earlier on this trip, I didn't really want another one. However, a Thai lady dressed in a short smock enticed me in. She was unbelievably pretty with a sexy smile and I was being led to a massage room in the back. I could not help but check out her pert figure. I was led into a room in the back and after being left to undress, I stripped down to my pants ready for my massage. Needless to say, after being told to remove my underwear and lay down with a small towel placed on my lower parts, I had a feeling I was getting more than a massage. She really worked hard on the massage on my shoulders, legs and the rest of my body, rubbing oil in and her hands accidentally slipping into certain areas they shouldn't have been. I won't say any more as it's YouTube, but I'm sure your viewers will guess what I happened next and I certainly left with a big smile on my face and will hopefully be returning to Thailand very soon. The moral of the story, I guess, is have fun, always respect the girls and enjoy Thailand for what it is. Absolutely, couldn't agree with the guy more. If you come in here and you're having fun, behave yourselves and respect the locals and you'll have a great time and everybody I know who's been here for the first time they as soon as they get back to their home country the first thing they're doing is they're looking to book flights to return to the land of smiles all right guys that's it four stories this week uh, i'll be back next week with some more stories as as always thanks for listening to me and uh, i'll catch up with you next week